All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 19. And in this lesson, students are gonna be putting together all the, that they've been learning about adding and subtracting fractions, and we're gonna put it in action in word problems, all right? Now, this is not gonna be scary. Uh, you'll notice this big old huge long list here of, of the suggested delivery of instruction. Now, well, this is crazy long list. And really what this is saying is employ the RDW process, the read, draw, write process. We've got six problems here. I think I'm gonna model the drawing for all six because you know a lot of parents and teachers from the old school way of learning, we, we are like, I don't know how to draw it, I just know how to solve it. So I'm gonna draw the models for all the problems. I think I'm gonna solve maybe just three of the six. So let's get going. So here we have Zach, and Zach spent two thirds of an hour reading on Friday, and one and a third hours reading on Saturday. How much more time did he read on Saturday than on Friday? So what I see, how I think of this problem is, we have two characters in this problem. We have Friday and Saturday being our, kind of like our two characters. And I'm gonna start by drawing both of those tape diagrams as identical as possible. So I'm gonna give them each a same tape diagram. And I, I generally, whenever I have two subjects, like Friday and Saturday, or cats and dogs, I know I'm gonna draw, label them. And then I'm gonna start by drawing both tape diagrams the same length. And then I'm gonna go back and read the question again and then modify the tape diagrams as necessary. So it says, Zach spent two thirds of an hour reading on Friday. So that means this length right here is two thirds. And then it says, and then a one and a third hours reading on Saturday. So I need to know that Saturday's tape diagram is supposed to be longer than Friday because I'm supposed to, as a fourth grader, know that one and a third is larger than two thirds. How much larger? It doesn't really matter. So we're just going to draw an arbitrary ex extension and I'm going to label Saturday right here as one and a third. So there's our model. And then the question says, well, how much more time did he read on Saturday? Then on Friday, so what we're asked for is, what is this length right here? What is this extension here? And so the way we can solve it, there's a couple ways we can solve it. One way is we could start with the two-thirds of Friday and say, plus what is going to give us one and a third, which is the length here. So two-thirds plus what gives us one, uh, one and a third. Another way we could think of it is as subtraction. We could say one-third minus two-thirds is equal to what? And so there's a couple of ways, and I'm sure students can come up with others. And parents and teachers, I'm going to leave you the rest of this problem to solve. So on this problem, Mrs. Cashmore bought a large melon. She cut a piece that weighed one and an eighth pound and gave it to her neighbor. The remaining piece of melon weighed six-eighths of a pound, how much did the whole melon weigh? So the idea would be, I'm gonna draw a picture of that melon, and it's gonna look like a tape diagram, and it says she cut and weighed, uh, cut a piece and weighed, that weighed one and an eighth pound and gave it to her neighbor. How much is one and an eighth pound? I don't know, let's just call this one and an eighth pound. And then it says the remaining piece, so that's this part right here, weighed six eighths. Now parents and teachers, it is perfectly fine for the model itself to not be proportional, right? It's okay that this and this are not really drawn to scale. It's, it's perfectly fine. So just to be clear, this is the neighbor And this is the part she kept. And the question is, how much did the whole melon weigh? Which means we're really looking at the entire length. 
And so, oh, that would be 6 eighths plus 1 and an eighth. There's a variety of ways we could have solved, we could solve this. I think I'm going to start with, well, you know, actually we can see one, this is really kind of easy. This is 1 and an eighth. So another way we can uh, solve this is kind of using that commutative property and think of it as 6 eighths plus 1 eighth plus 1 whole. And so that gives us the answer of 1 and 7 eighths. The idea being 6 eighths plus 1 eighth is 7 eighths plus the 1 whole gives us the answer of 1 and 7 eighths. Moving on, I'll draw this picture, but I won't solve the problem. It says, Allie's little sister wanted to help her make some oatmeal cookies first. She put 5 eighths cup of oatmeal in the bowl. Next, she added, let's see, 5 eighths, another 5 eighths cup of oatmeal. Finally, she added another 5 eighths cup of oatmeal. How much oatmeal did she put in the bowl? So the idea is, what would the picture look like? Well... Here's 5 eighths. Here's another 5 eighths. And here's a final 5 eighths. And the question is, what's the entire amount? And what would we do? We'd do 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths. Parents and teachers, I will let you, I'll do the hard part, uh, 15 eighths is one way to do it, but we're not done because we want to simplify that into a mixed number. But parents and teachers, I'm going to let you solve the rest of this problem on your own. And Marsha baked two pans of brownies. Her family ate one and five-sixths pans. What fraction of pan brownies was left? You know, because of the context, teachers, sometimes this might be a really good idea to time to like draw the area model. So here's a pan, and here's a pan, and they're supposed to look the same. They don't, but that's okay. And her family ate one and five-sixths. So what does that mean? Well, they ate this entire pan right here. So let's say, okay, we ate this pan right here. Now, we, gotta, we need to show that final five-sixths that they ate. So what are we going to do? Well, let's start by taking this and cutting it into sixths. I might have said eighths earlier. Sixths. And then the eight, five of those sixths. One, two, three, four, five. So there's the one and the five sixths that they ate. How much is left? How much of the brownies is left? Just this one little piece, and that's one-sixth. Now, I shouldn't have solved this one because I said I wasn't going to. Ah, that's the bonus. You got the answer. <laughs> so I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to write the, the expression, right? Because I solved it, but I never wrote the expression. So I want you down here to figure out how to write the, the numerical expression for that problem. And the last problem for this video, Joni wrote a letter that was one and a quarter pages long. Katie wrote a letter that was three quarters of a page shorter than Joni's letter. How long was Katie's letter? So we see two characters. We see Joni and we see Katie. And I'm going to start off by giving both of their tape diagrams the exact same length, the best I can draw. All right, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the question. Joni wrote a letter that was one and a quarter pages long. So this length right here is one and a quarter. <clears throat> then it says, Katie wrote a letter that was three quarters of a page shorter than Joni's. So that means this guy is too long. In fact, I need to make it shorter by three quarters. And the question is, how long is Katie's letter? So the question is saying, what's this piece left over? Now what is the math problem we're going to use to write to solve this problem? Well, we started this whole length right here, you'll, you will recall, was one and a quarter length. 
uh, one and a quarter pages, because I said both of these tape diagrams are going to be the same length. And since this one is one and a quarter, that means this one started out as one and a quarter, but then we crossed off three quarters. Because her, uh, at the time, that tape diagram was too long. It needed to be three quarters of a page shorter. So here's our math problem. A lot of different ways to solve this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show one way. This, this is four fifth. I mean four fourths, and one fourth, because you could think of this one whole as four fourths, which means we can put these together and call them five fourths, and then we're going to take away the three fourths that it says we we're supposed to take away, and when we do that, we get two fourths. So this length right here is two-fourths. And that wraps up 4th grade module 5 lesson 19 solving word problems using that read, draw, and write technique.